Welcome to the third episode of what monotheism offers versus what atheism offers. And this time I'll be talking about happiness. A lot of religious people claim that you can't be truly happy without religion, you know, without the hope of an afterlife. The belief that there is something watching over us. And we atheists are often accused of being very unhappy, angry people. Now, while I can see how it might give a certain amount of happiness to believe in aforementioned, the thing is, it's very, very fragile with a lot of religious people it's it doesn't take a lot for them to get anxious about what they believe in it doesn't take a lot of challenging uh, whereas to, you know, to contrast that as an atheist you can't really challenge my beliefs in anything when I see new evidence and I have to change my opinion on something I do. It doesn't... None of it is, you know, written in stone, so... There really isn't a problem with that. And what we atheists get happiness from... Is, you know, the, the one life to live. We enjoy life the way it is now. I would argue that you're unhappy, unhappier, if you need to believe that something better will come along than what you have right now. Happiness isn't getting what you want, it's wanting what you've got. I don't remember who said that, but it's an excellent quote. You're not automatically happy because you have a comforting belief, a, a blanket to you know, hug real tight when things look bad. You're happy when you're enjoying the good, and when you can find joy in the small things in life. It isn't happiness to look at something bad and say, well, things will get better once we die. It's happiness to look at... This is gonna get schmaltzy, but you know, something in nature, or a loved one. Something something real, something in this life, of this life. To look at that and just wonder and just let it... let it get to you. You know, and you don't need to believe that there is a willpower behind these things for you to appreciate them. You don't need to believe that nature was made in that exact way. I have never believed in any actual deity, but I would wager that it fills you with more wonder when you know and understand some of the things and when you actually look at the result and then think about how it came to be. When you think about the theory of evolution and then look at a flower or an animal, not necessarily all animals because some of them are, you know, not the greatest to, you know, make you real happy, but anyway, and you think about, wow, how many millions of years was that underway, and now it's right there, now it's, you know, rather than someone snapped their fingers and there it was. 
I think religion takes away more happiness than it gives. It offers certain, at least attempts at comfort by saying, well, things aren't only what we know now, but it doesn't allow for the full dimensions of what is real. But enough about Gaza. When you actually think about the things that are here, and how they came to be, and how it might be, you know, a long time from now, that is wonder, that is joy, and that is happiness. More than accepting some simplistic explanation that relies on accepting things that there isn't proof of and nowadays there's proof against. Religion is a scared mind trying to answer a question it doesn't know the answer to because we don't like unanswered questions. But whether you accept the truth or you just decide to wonder about something else, I would say both of those give far more happiness than accepting an unreasonable explanation that tries to boil it down to some very basic, you know, the moment one god or some amount of gods that you know the name of, that you know the characteristics of, sometimes anyway, did something specific, then that's kind of it, you know, there's no room for questions anymore. That's my take on it.